Have you been told that you have a dilated ascending aorta? Or you know that you've got an ascending aortic aneurysm that's going to need surgery, but you don't really know how doctors are going to decide when the time has come for you to need an operation. And indeed, whether or not that operation can be done through a keyhole. If those questions resonate with you, then this is the video for you to watch. Now, can I ask you a favor? If you like the video, can you share it, like it, and subscribe to the channel? It helps us to help you. Now back to the topic at hand. In order for me to explain what an ascending aortic dilatation is or what an aortic root aneurysm is, I first need to explain to you what a normal anatomy looks like. Now here's a schematic diagram of the aorta, which is the major pipe through which blood travels around the body. At the beginning of this aorta, called the aortic root, I call it the garlic bulb, is the aortic valve, the last valve through which blood flows as it goes round the body. Now this valve is very important. I'll come back to it in a moment. Now this particular schematic diagram demonstrates a normal aortic root. Now here is an abnormal aortic root. You can see how dilated it is. And the big problem with this is that it can tear within its wall, creating what's called an acute aortic dissection. And often patients present feeling very unwell with severe back pain or chest pain. And without emergency surgery, the sort of thing that will get a heart surgeon out of bed at three o'clock in the morning, without that surgery, you will die. Now, the other risk, of course, with aneurysms, as you all know, is that it can rupture outwards. And that also is a very, very difficult condition to treat if it occurs. So the best way to avoid these complications is to know that you've got the problem and to know when to treat it before a complication arises. Now how do we treat this? Well we treat this by replacing the aortic root or the ascending aorta with a man-made tube or a tube that we derive from animals or sometimes from humans who've been kind enough to, to donate their aorta when they've died. We call this a homograft. That's quite complicated. I'm not going to go into that today. But the important thing is to know about the problem, to monitor the problem and know exactly when to treat the problem. So how do Surgeons know how to treat such a complex issue. Well, we use guidelines. Now, guidelines are published on a regular basis by clever people around the world to help doctors around the world to know when to treat this condition. And those guidelines are based upon clinical experience, based upon outcome data, and based upon the risk balance ratio, i.e. what is the risk of leaving the aneurysm against operating. So if you were a 40-year-old individual, the risk of surgery might be less than if you're an 80-year-old individual. And of course, at 80, we might be more tolerant of a slightly enlarged aorta compared to a younger person. It kind of depends upon that balance. But balance aside, let me try and explain to you the numbers that you're going to need to know in order for you to understand when the time has come for your dilated ascending aorta or aortic root aneurysm to require an operation. Well, the first question we have to ask is what kind of aortic valve have you got? Remember in that garlic bulb is the aortic valve. Is your aortic valve normal, tri-leaflet, or is it bicuspid, made up of two leaflets? If it's bicuspid, then we know that the aorta around that bicuspid valve can be weaker and therefore is more prone to dilate quicker. And therefore, we would want to replace that ascending aorta sooner. Now the key numbers that you need to remember are on this algorithm and you can take a photograph of this or you can screenshot it and keep it for your reference. It's based upon guidelines and it's very accurate. If you've got a normal tri-leaflet valve, the two numbers you need to remember are 5.5 and 5. If your aortic valve is normally functioning, we won't want to replace that aorta until it reaches 5.5 centimeters or above. If it's abnormal, the aortic valve that is, then we will replace it 5 centimeters. If you've got a bicuspid aortic valve, the numbers you need to remember are 5 and 4.5. If your bicuspid valve is working normally, we'll wait for 5 and above. And if it's abnormal and needs an operation, we will replace the aorta at 4.5. Now, there are two more caveats of interest here. One of them is, if we're monitoring your aortic root and it grows by more than 0.5 centimeters in any one year, you will probably need an operation. In addition to that, if you've got a family history of aortic aneurysms or aortic rupture, perhaps an aortic dissection in the family, then we may regard a lower threshold for operating on your ascending aortic dilatation or aortic root aneurysm. Now, of course, the million dollar question is a five foot one woman and a six foot tall man with a four and a half centimeter aorta are not the same thing. How do we account for size of the human being? 
Well, we use a nomogram that takes into account your body surface area. And at the end of this video is a link for another video that will take you through how you can calculate your body surface area and use that nomogram, knowing the size of your ascending aorta, to know what your yearly risk of an aortic complication is going to be. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it, like it and subscribe. Watch the next video. There'll be lots more to come. Help us to help you.